So in today's video, we're gonna focus on the following components here. We're gonna focus on the SG300 switches. The top one is configured in L3 mode. And the bottom one here is configured in L2 mode. And we're gonna be focusing on ESX I3 is the host. Let's break down the, the connectivity for ESXi 3 to the Cisco SG352 port. So here we have our switch and we have our physical ESXi host, ESXi 3. It has six physical adapters, four of which are connected to the switch. The switch ports are configured in trunk mode and they're trunking the following VLANs. VLAN 11, VLAN 30, VLAN 50, and VLAN 55. Now ports 27 and 28 are configured to pass VLAN 50 as untagged traffic. So the ESXi host has a VDS configured called PVDS, which has six uplinks and they're mapped to their corresponding physical adapters. This, also, this VDS also has three port groups configured. So port group demo EST. So this would demonstrate uh, external switch tagging, demo VST, which will demonstrate virtual switch tagging and demo VGT, which will demonstrate virtual guest tagging. Now the port groups are configured as follows. So the VLAN type for the EST is configured to none. The VLAN type for VST is configured for VLAN as well as VLAN ID 30. And the VGT port group is configured in VLAN trunking and is trunking all VLANs. So v, uh, zero through 4,094. All three port groups has subnets associated with them. So the demo EST has 192.168.50.0 slash 24 associated with it. The demo VST has 192.168.30.0 slash 24. And demo VGT has 192.168.11.0 slash 24 and 192.168.55.0 slash 24. So demo EST is using uplink three as the active uplink and uplink two as standby. Demo VST is using uplink two as active and uplink one as standby. And finally, demo VGT is using uplink zero as active and uplink one as standby. I'm using a virtual router, in this case, ViOS, and it is attached to all three port groups. Now that we have a good understanding how the physical switch is configured, how the hosts are connected to those switches and how the, the virtual distributed switch is configured, let's talk about the different options vSphere has with regards to handling tagging of VLANs. So the first one is external switch tagging. And this is where the switch will go ahead and, and perform the tagging of VLANs. So in this case, we have VLAN 50 configured as untagged. So what's gonna happen is the switch is gonna send traffic from VLAN 50 untagged down to the ESXi host on VMNIC 3. It's going to go to that port group, demo EST, and then demo EST is going to forward that traffic to the virtual machine. Now, demo virtual switch tagging, the switch here in this case is sending VLAN, VLAN 30 tagged down the wire to the virtual switch. The virtual switch is going to go ahead and remove that tag and forward that traffic to the virtual machine. And finally, we have demo virtual guest tagging. So what happens here is, so the virtual switch will send the following tag VLANs. So VLANs 11, 30, 50, and 55 in our case. So it's going to send these tag VLANs down the wire to VMNIC0, down to the port group, and the port group's gonna take all those VLANs and continue to forward it on to the guest VM. And the guest VM will go ahead and remove that tag. It's coming down, hits the virtual machine, the virtual machine will go ahead and remove the tag. Now let's go ahead and switch over to vSphere and look at how we have things configured here. Right now things are working and operational. So if we go to ESXi host, configure, virtual switches and we click on demo EST, you can see it's using an uplink of three and the VLAN is configured to none and our virtual router is associated with that port group as well. If we look at virtual switch tagging, its uplink is uplink two and it's configured with VLAN 30 as a VLAN ID. And again, our virtual router is associated with that one. And then finally, we have demo VGT and it's trunking all VLANs, so zero through 4,094 and its active uplink is uplink zero. So let's look at demo EST and let's see what port he's plugged into on the switch. So if we click on demo EST, and then expand uplink three, we can see that we have VMNIC three here. We click on the ellipsis here and click view settings and click on CDP. We can see it's plugged into port 28. So if we go to our 52 port switch and we go to VLAN membership, we can see that port 28, if you look at details, 
it is sending VLAN 50 as untagged. So that U, that U signifies untagged member. So if we go back and we look at how v demo VST is configured, it's plugged into uplink two, which is VMNIC two. And VMNIC two is plugged into port 27. So 27, you can see here, we're trunking the necessary VLANs for that port group, and which in this case is VLAN 30. So if we go back here, this, this port group is looking for VLAN 30. So once it receives it, it will go ahead and remove the tag and then forward the traffic on to the virtual machine. And then finally here, we have our demo VGT using an active uplink zero, which is VMNIC zero. And if we look at its port group, we can see that it's plugged into port 25. So if we go to port 25, you can see here we're trunking all VLAN. So trunking VLAN 11, 30, 50, and 55. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some ping tests and we're gonna do those ping tests from our SG320 switch because this switch is configured in a layer three mode. So all of our VLAN gateways terminate here. So we can see VLAN 11 has a, a gateway of .2, VLAN 30.2, and VLAN 50 and 55. So I have another window open here with all of our ping commands. So let me go ahead and stop these real quick. All I'm doing here is running some ping commands from that switch to these various interfaces that are associated with that virtual router VM. If I click enter on all these, enter, 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 you can see we're pinging on VLAN 30, 50, and 55. VLAN 11 is not working yet because we haven't configured the virtual interface on that VM yet. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start with external switch tagging, and we're just gonna change some stuff and see what happens as far as communication goes. So if we switch back over to this window here, and remember, external switch tagging is reliant on the switch to do all the tagging. So if we go to our switch and we go to port to VLAN, this will help us identify the VLAN 50 and see which ports are untagged for that VLAN. So if I click go here and I scroll down to 28, we can see both 27 and 28 are untagged. 28, which is the active uplink. If I change this to exclude, What's gonna happen is the switch is gonna configure my default VLAN, which is VLAN 99. If we go back here and click go, and then scroll down here, we can see 28 now is using VLAN 99 as untagged. And the default VLAN on the switch is 999. Okay, so now if we go back over to our ping command, we can see that VLAN 50 communication has stopped working. Now this is because we're using a different VLAN and this subnet here, 192.168.50.220 is associated with VLAN 50. And we just told the switch to go ahead and use the default VLAN for the switches, which is VLAN 99, which in this case, VLAN 99 doesn't have any interfaces configured for it. So that's why communication is not working. It's using the wrong VLAN. So if we go back to that port group and go back to VLAN 50, click go, scroll down, we can see this exclude if we change this back to untagged, click apply. And if we go back over to our ping command, we can see now we are communicating. So we weren't communicating and now, now we are. Now let's look at virtual switch tagging. So if we go back over to virtual switch tagging and look at this, if we change this VLAN ID to another VLAN, because remember we're trunking multiple VLANs here, but this particular port group is only interested in VLAN 30 because we have the interfaces on that virtual router configured as 192.168.30.220. If we go in here, change this, oops, right here. We go to virtual switch tagging, actions, edit. Let's just give this VLAN, let's change this to VLAN 10. What do you think is gonna happen? Yep, communication stops working. As you see here, VLAN 30 stops pinging because we're using VLAN 10 which is a different subnet from VLAN 30. So if we go back to our virtual uh, layer three switch, you can see VLAN 10 is on 10.1.10.0 subnet slash 24. Communication is not gonna work because we're trying to ping an interface that is in the 192.168.30 subnet range, which is associated with VLAN 30. We switch back over to vSphere and we just change this back. Go to actions, edit, VLAN, change this back to 30 and click OK, and we go back over, we can see now we're getting the communication again for VLAN 30. So now let's work on the virtual guest tagging. We can see we're pinging VLAN 55. Let's go ahead and get VLAN 11 working. So in order to do this, uh, let's quickly review what is configured on the switch as well as the vSphere port group. So if we go to switch, we can see we were plugged into, go back here, 
virtual guest tagging is on a VM neck zero, which I believe was plugged into 25. Yep, 25. So if we go to 25, we can see details. We can see all the VLANs that we're passing. We're passing VLAN 11, 30, 50, and 55. Once traffic for these VLANs are leave the switch, it's gonna be tagged. It's gonna to go to the virtual switch inside ESXi. It's gonna hit the port group here. This port group is gonna say, okay, you wanna trunk all those VLANs from your physical switch down to the virtual machine. In this case, I'm trunking all VLANs. If I wanted to, I can go into the virtual guest tagging port group and go to edit settings, and I can specify just 11 and 55 if I wanted to. In this case, I'll just leave it all. And um, what we're gonna do now is go to our virtual router and go ahead and SSH into this and go into config mode. Let's show interfaces right now. So you can see here are the interfaces. ETH0 is associated with the external switch tagging port group. ETH1 is associated with the virtual switch tagging port group. And ETH2 is associated with the virtual guest tagging port group. And you can see right now this only has one VIF configured and that's for VLAN 55. So if we go ahead and, and go ahead and set this for VLAN 11. So set interface ethernet eth2 vif 11 and then the IP address of the interface. And then if I hit commit, we should see the communication on the left hand side start working and it is. And if I go to show interface now, we can see now we have two virtual interfaces, one for VLAN 11, one for VLAN 55. And that's it. That's gonna wrap up the different VLAN tagging options we have in, inside vSphere. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and consider subscribing. Thank you.